Hey guys, Steve here for Who Took My Days, and welcome to Q&A Part 2. That's right, I finished doing the video uh, for Part 1. Well, it was going to be just that part, but then I got more questions. And I asked, and you guys delivered, so here we are, Part 2. We're going to dive right in. These came from the Miniatures Paintbrush. Some fantastic questions here. Uh, so first off, how did you come to love war games? Well, I covered this last one. We'll go through it again just in case you guys are seeing this one first and not the other one. Um, wow, second edition 40K uh, was, was was going on and I was in North Bay, and which is a town about four hours north of here, basically. And I was hitting up a little comic book store and I saw this hobby store. I thought, well, why not? Again, this is a time back in the day when bookstores would carry all the, the uh, whether it was our, our like role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons, they carried the stuff, not like now. Um, I said, hey, let's check it out. I asked my dad, he said, sure. I walked in, um, there were guys in the one in the back rooms playing on a big green table. I was looking around, there were models everywhere, just tons of stuff. And I went over to this massive rack of books and there I saw this fantastic, well-done cover of the of Codex Alterines, the second edition Codex for Space Marines. And that was it. I read through that, I don't know, a thousand times. The artwork, the stories, the fluff, um, these awesome pictures of the characters. It was great, right? The, the, the beautiful pictures of the models all painted up and that was it. And I went from there and, you know, uh, what else can I say? The history, the rest is history and here we are today. But that was the moment I fell in love with it when I uh, I read that book I had to play, and that was that was the end of that. Um, where do you stand on Games Workshop webin weaponizing the fear of missing out? I hate it. Um, it is a tactic that every company in the world has used forever. It's 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 what we, it's what our entire um, what a lot of our industry is based on. That's a lot of what a lot of uh, ads are based on, the fear of missing out. Um, they say sex sells, but fear is the ultimate sales tactic. You know, uh, fear of not having the latest gadget, the latest home, the latest car, the latest phone. It's the same thing. In Games Workshop, I mean, business wise, everybody's doing. There, there's nothing new here. There's nothing amazing about it. I just hate it. Um, I don't. I mean, and it makes big buck for them. I mean, those those sets that come out that are limited, they go, and they go quickly. Um, but I don't like it. I don't think it's a great way to get people buying your product. They shouldn't be buying your product because it's gonna disappear quick. And, oh, I better have it. If I don't have it, I'm gonna miss out. No, they should be buying your product on, on the, qual the quality of it, not the quantity or lack thereof. So I, I hate it. I don't think it's a, I mean, like I said, it's a sale tactic everybody uses, but there's just no honor to me. I don't like it. And that's my opinion. Um, next, what is your stance on the Marine Bandai uh, figure pricing? I don't get it. I mean, I do get it, but I don't get it. It's one of those things that... I mean, I'm not sure how far it'll spread in terms of, of what stores will, will carry it. Obviously, Games Workshop stores or Warhammer stores as well. Uh, but it's it's a lot of money. I just checked it there uh, for Canada. It's like two hundred ninety dollars. This thing better like again. It's one of those things. Is this going to be a collector's item? Is this going to only be around for a while and then disappear? Um, it just it's too much money for for a. I mean, it's it's a collector's toy. It's a toy, right? It's an action figure. Um, but two hundred ninety bucks for it. No. It's too, it's, I don't like it. Again, it's too much. Um, and I'm sure there's some people that disagree with me and would say that's awesome. I love it. They'll, they'll buy it and good for them. Uh, more power to them. Uh, I'm sure Games Workshop will sell a bunch and make a bunch more money, uh, which is good for them. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's worth the money. Um, I'd rather spend $290 on building an army. In fact, I'm working on, on uh, an idea and I'm going through the Games Workshop website to buy, well, right now just price it out, but I could get a whole lot more plastic to put into my uh, pile of opportunity to paint up. And I'd rather do that than spend $290 on a posable action figure of a Space Marine Captain. I don't know, to me, 
there's just better uses of, of that money. Um, let's see. What are your go-to paints if you had to choose 10? My go-to paints, honestly, really simple for this one. I'd probably say, you know, it's the Citadel paints. It's what I've been using forever. Um, if I'd use 10, yeah, it'd be, it'd be Citadel paints. Um, I mean, I've used a few others. I've used some Vallejo. I've used uh, the Privateer Press, the P3, I think it is. I've used a bunch of paints, uh, testers, uh, you know, even craft store paint stuff, you know, that stuff you get at a dollar store. I've, I've used some of those. Um, but yeah, Citadel's the one I usually go for. It's just what I've used. That's what I'm comfortable with. Um, nothing wrong with any other ones. But yeah, it's what I've used for a lot of time. In fact, actually, some of my... Um, my Inquisition models are painted using the uh, Privateer Press, the 3P or P3, whatever it is, uh, paints. Just because I have those colors and they're fantastic colors to use. So, but yeah, at the end of the day, Citadel's 100% uh, one hundred the way I, I, I'd go for those paints. Um, what are must-have products that a newbie in a hobby needs? I had to think about this one. Um, definitely... See, what do you mean by products? That was my big question right there. Um, I'm assuming you mean like, not like the hobby knives, uh, paint brushes. Uh, first off, a good set of paint brushes. You need a good set of, of paint brushes that'll last. Uh, you gotta make sure you take care of them, but make a good set of paint brushes that'll last. Um, and again, that's kind of up to who, whoever's got the paint brushes. The Citadel, one, Citadel ones are okay. Uh, my wife bought me a set online from Amazon, and uh, I, I can't remember what they're called, but, uh, but they're fantastic. I love them. They're standing up. They're great. A good set of paintbrushes. Um, get a good uh, measuring tape, a good one. Um, wherever you want to find one, if you want to get like an industrial size one, a big thick one, a small one, just make sure you use a good measuring tape. Um, what else? Make sure you have a nice area to paint in with lots of lighting. So get yourself a, a light that you can put over your spot that illuminates things really well so you can see the details. Because some models, especially prime and black, details can go missing, right? Just because the light's not hitting them in the right way. Uh, definitely get a good storage unit of some sort, whatever it is to put your models in, to put your paints in. Uh, I've seen people with, you know, the, the racks up there and all the paints are put away. But definitely for, for uh, a newbie, good brushes, a good place to paint. Um, you get yourself a hobby knife to cut off. To, you know, and, and make sure you have a good hobby knife, a good pair of little uh, pincers there to cut your models off, to clean them off. Just make sure you have this nice basic set of tools, a hobby knife, some files. Um... Yeah, that to me that, that that seems that that would be a good start for a newbie to get things uh, to get things squared away and start on a good solid footing. Um, this is a good one. Is using an airbrush cheating? Absolutely not. Um, I've rarely used airbrush. I'm old school that way, but it's definitely not cheating. That's one of the beautiful things about the hobby is you can do it any way you want. Um, if you want to use an airbrush to do your models, it's not cheating. Go for it absolutely go for it um if you're one of the old school guys like me you like to use a brush for everything and all your layering and your highlighting and and all that stuff that's cool too uh but no it's definitely not cheating it's just another way to uh, get your models painted i have no problem with someone using your brush <clears throat> okay uh, number six on this list other than wargaming what are some of your interests Oh, well, there's a whole bunch. Um, as I mentioned earlier, comic books. I've been a comic book collector for a long, long time. Slowed down a bit recently in New Year's, in the last few years because of the pricing and uh, I guess that aggressive sales, the fear of missing out. There's just so many comic books now and it's hard to keep up with everything. Uh, but yeah, the comic books um, outrank everything else. I love comic books. I, love, I mean, the Marvel movies, even the DC ones are fantastic. I'm, living the high life with all these these marvel and dc movies coming out but yeah comic books definitely one i'm a big fan of, of world war ii history um ancient history yeah you know ancient greece ancient rome stuff like that uh, i love reading about the 
about those those civilizations and uh, I'm a big you know, like I said big fan of World War II history there's just so much uh, incredibly amazing stuff happened in such a short period of time um, other interests like reading playing video games um, big fan of both Final Fantasy video games love playing those even the old ones I'll go back to those just because they were they're an important part of my childhood, and uh, they were just, they're such fantastically well-made games. Even the ones that are, you know, that 16-bit or, or uh, horribly, even, like, they haven't aged well, some, like, Final Fantasy VII with all the polygons everywhere. And, uh, but they're just, that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, how do you introduce someone interested in Warhammer without overwhelming them? That's a hard thing to do, because there's a lot so I've introduced people to Warhammer and basically whether I was at when I whether I was working games or a or on my own is you kind of give them an overview a quick a brief overview say something like okay so it's a it's a tabletop war game set in the future where mankind has this uh empire that reaches across the whole galaxy um and Technologies become like magic. It's almost a superstition. There's aliens everywhere, and uh, there's there's evil parts to it. There's heretics and demons and aliens and monsters trying to destroy them. And you can either be one of these alien or, or demonic forces, or you can be one of these stalwart defenders of the Imperium and try and save it. And you start with something simple like that. And then one of the things I do is like uh. Sometime from time to time, especially when I, you know, I wasn't working in Games Workshop. With Games Workshop, you've all the tools there. You can just show them, uh, like, what do you like? Do you like robots? Do you like dragons? Do you like elves? Do you like, right? Um, whatever way you want to go about it, right? But you just show them White Dwarf, something like that. Let them, uh, White Dwarf or a Codex or something, and let them look and go, wow, man, that's really cool. And go, yeah, there's so much fluff. But let's just start off small. What do you like? Right? Do you like, like I said, do you like robots? Do you like dragons? Do you like elves? Do you like dwarves? Do you like giant genetically engineered superhumans in power armor? Uh, do you like sneaky uh, dark elves that stab you in the back with poison blades? Do you, right? Just kind of find out what they like and go there and get them started that way. You know, get them to hop onto uh, the Games Workshop website or Lexicanum or, or something like that where they can kind of delve into themselves. Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Just let them, give them a little bit of information to kind of pique their interest, find out what they like, and then kind of focus on that. Foc like how you kind of hyper-focus it on, on one aspect, right? Yeah, say they're a big fan of, of dwarves. So then you go to, right now, the dwarf and go, okay, well, here's a dwarf and Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, and this is what they're like. Right? They're really, really cool, right? They had all this fire and, or what have you. <clears throat> And go with that um, and get them sort of focus on one thing and then they can expand as we all have as you go out it's a good question I like that one um, what advice we give on how to react to that guy the cheating winning at all costs sore loser type guy oh, wow um, there's a lot of ways you can deal with that most involving going to jail no um, for someone like that, and I'm assuming you're asking this because you've dealt with this guy, and I have dealt with this guy before many, many times. Um, again, back when this game's workshop, I had the benefit of having some power and be able to kick people like this out of the store. Um, we had individuals like this who pop up in tournaments, in leagues, um, and they can vary from someone who just wants to win just a bit too much um, to someone who is going out of their way to cheat. They just, they want to cheat. They want to win. They don't care how they have to do it. And this is damaging to your groups. This is damaging to your store if you're, if you have around a store. So this is the type of person you don't want involved because they will drive, uh, your, your hobbyists away. They'll drive your friends away. They'll drive you away. You just will not want to play with this person. Um, and this, to, to, to explain it better, this is the type of person who will come in and will, uh, they will they will do whatever they can to cheat. They will roll dice in secret. They will move a unit or try to move a unit or, or a vehicle or something just a little bit when they don't think you're watching. Uh, they'll try to um, 
you know, maybe you do those moves where you start the base, but then they move it out, they're actually at the back of the base, just to get that extra inch, just to be that little bit closer, maybe get the weapons that are not. Uh, there'll be the people who will come to tournaments. Um, like I said, we had a gentleman who did this all the time. He'd come to the league we, were we had it when I was at Games Workshop, and one of the things he had to do was come with a fully completed list that you could just show to your opponent. And whenever he came, he came with no list. And he was he had a big army. It was This was a fantasy league, like a big dwarf army. And so basically he was tailoring his list as he went. And we eventually caught on because we kept noticing he had like these really low scores. In this league, you could, your, your opponent would score you. His army prepper, and there's a bunch of stuff that's always so low. And we're wondering why we watched one day and we saw him prepping an army. He said, okay, dude, you need to have your army prepped. Oh yeah, I, I forgot it, let me... And every time he forgot, so eventually got to the point. And then we found out also that he was prepping a new army list every game to try and t tailor his army for that opponent. So we basically one day we came in and said, do you have a list? No, no, I forgot it then. Out you go, buddy. You can't play. He was doing it too much to too many people. And so we, we didn't let him lead in, the, in that league anymore. Um, other people, I... Uh, I actually had a game against a guy who he come, he was playing Grey Knights and I was starting to actually finally take some, some casualties um, and he had this big pile of models and every turn he somehow had more Grey Knights to bring out and I realized he was just cycling through that pile. If I took out a unit next turn that unit would come back oh no it's, it's it's one of my i'm like we're playing 1500 points and you have gray knights this is back in like fourth or third or fourth edition so they were expensive then um and like how do you have this many marines i realize you're just cycling through that pile um how do you deal with that guy like that so now we, we've kind of cleared that up how do you deal with a guy like that <clears throat> if you're playing a tournament against someone like that and you see them cheating you call them out on it it's that simple um obviously it's up to who is running a tournament to kind of determine what happens to them but call it out don't be rude about it um but call them out because these people these type, these type of that guy is going to continue cheating there was a a, a games workshop there's a tournament that they was on their twitch i believe and a, a guy did that he was cheating every single game and he finally caught him cheating on the stream in the end of the tournament. He was at the very end and he'd been cheating the whole time. So, you know, that it just messes up the whole thing. So call him on it. Um, these things also have a tendency to take care of themselves. If you're going to your friendly local gaming store or games workshop store or wherever, um, these people will eventually wear out their welcome. Just don't play them. If you realize, you know, this guy just wants to win at all costs. He doesn't want to make it fun for anybody else but himself. Just stop playing with them. Don't play games. Warn other people, say, hey, man, that guy's going to cheat you. Again, don't be rude about it, but that's what it is. So you kind of have to uh, sort of gently police the community a bit. If you know someone's cheating, now don't go around trying to destroy the person. But definitely say, you know, man, that, that guy cheats every game. He cheated me, he cheated that guy. Yeah, make sure you, 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 you have proof of this, that he's cheated lots of people or he... Um, and sometimes it's also understanding where it's coming from. Some people are, are just, they need to win, regardless of what the reason is. Sometimes it's because that's just how they are. They need to win. Uh, other times it can actually be, be due to some sort of um, social anxiety or, or uh, low self-esteem. There was a gaming group I had when I lived, uh, like I was years ago when I was uh, living out in a place called Stittsville, there's I knew some people, and we had this one guy, and he would cheat all the time. It was, and it was never anything out there, it was always subtle. Um, he, he had a bunch of armies, so every game he would switch armies. And he small things like, um, and we couldn't keep up, because you know, one day he'd bring guard, the next day he'd bring space marines, the next day he'd bring dark angels, the next day he'd bring uh, sisters of battle, the next day it'd be something else, right? And Obviously, this is this is a while ago. We, you had your codex. You didn't access the way we do now, where you can see them all, you can get them all, download them, whatever. So I have my space marine codex, and of course, one day he's playing guard, and the next he's doing this, and it's always subtle things like, oh yeah, my auto cannon does this, or you know, oh this unit does this, and you're like, well man, I I need to see the codex. I'm I'm going by your word because we're friends, and as we 
more he played, he realized the more he just needed to win because he had some serious self-esteem issues and he had to win. So understanding where a person's coming from helps you deal with that way. That way you can go, hey man, listen, you don't have to cheat here. You don't have to... You don't have to, to, to all, we're, we're not going to judge you if you lose, you're, you're welcome, or your friend, or have you just, you don't need to cheat. So talking to them, expressing yourself, hey man, you don't need to cheat here. That's a, another great way to deal with them. Again, it kind of depends on the person you're dealing with. The one big thing, the last thing I'll say is, is communicate with them. If you're, if you're constantly having to deal with these person cheating, say, hey man, listen, like, you don't need to cheat to win. If, if you're having a hard time, we can help you with the army. Maybe pick a different army. Maybe pick a different game. Um, but try to communicate with them. And it gets to the point where you have to kick them out or just stop playing with them. That's what you do. Right? Uh, what was it? How did you come up with the name of your channel? Okay, that's a good one. So, many years ago, probably about a decade now, a friend of mine... Uh, and I, we came up with, uh, uh, we tried getting a blog going. And uh, just the two of us writing things. I did some, uh, I think you still find if you put my name into Google, or no, my name, the channel name into Google. You might still see it there in WordPress. We just started with some small stuff. I did some terrain building stuff. He dived into, we each had a name. I was Ike. I can't remember his right now. Uh, I'll tell you about Ike later. That was another cool story. Maybe for another time. But, uh, one of the things that kept happening is we play a game and you know you'd fill up your dice block go, oh man who took my dice it was kind of a joke and they go oh man yeah and you trade back and forth to get your dice worked up and so this came from who took my dice um so after he had to he moved out he had moved out of way out of town and all that so that sort of ended the blog and we, we both life got busy i decided to do this channel and so i called him and said hey man i want to do a youtube channel and I, I want to use the Who Took My Dice name. He said, yeah, go for it, go for it. So awesome. So that's where it came from. The fact that we constantly joke about who took my dice, right? Obviously we knew who it was, but that was that's where it came from. It's a, a simple little uh, joke between friends. Um, <laughs> the follow-up question, that one. How many sets of dice do you buy since every seems, everyone seems to take here as well? Honestly, I've got probably three or four sets of dice. I actually have this lovely little um, leather baggy thing that my wife got for me that came with uh, a Age of Sigmar dice roller. It's got the little dice container. It's got the twin-tailed common on it. So I put everything in there. I've got three or four sets of dice in there, but no one ever takes my dice. <laughs> um, like I said, it was, it was a, a funny inside joke and just became, became a cool name. So who took my dice, right? Um, it's a nice running joke. People ask about it. I think it's funny. I think it's catchy. People seem to remember it. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I've got like four or five sets of dice. I've been through lots of dice in my time. Um, if you get some special dice, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll show those off at some point. I got some dice I got from different events we ran in Games Workshop. Uh, I actually have a couple dice that are red that have the um, Blood Ravens chapter symbol on it from the uh, Brother vs. Brother battle they did. 2008 basically they they went around parts of canada with two armies at least at least parts of ontario it might have just been ontario with two armies of blood raven and a uh salamanders space marine armies and they were fighting each other this is way back when blood ravens first came out thanks to uh dawn of war and, and the, the uh, this is before dawn of war too though but dawn of war and winter assault and all that so blood ravens were kind of like the, the it thing uh, they were they started showing up in the in the space ring codexes and so that was a lot of fun but yeah uh, yeah you said three or four or five diet sets no one really takes them though i'm sorry all right guys but thank you again for the mention pretty press for those awesome questions i hope you enjoyed this um i hope you guys were, were you can get some pinging done when you listen to me blab on here but again thank you very much guys for uh for the questions for for listening through all this um i hope you enjoyed it as always, keep rolling those dice, guys. We'll see you later.